with Northern Arizona Council of Governments. Welcome to the show, Brandon. Thank you very much for having me. So I had a, you on a previous show, and we started talking a little bit about what NACOG does, and there is just so much. So I wanted to first discuss what do you do for NACOG and what do you oversee? Well, I'm the Family Supports Program Manager for the Area Agency on Aging, and that's one of the uh, departments that is under the umbrella of NACOG, NACOG standing for Northern Arizona Council of Governments. And what the Area Agency on Aging does is we run the programs, supports, and services that are funded by the Older Americans Act which was signed by Lyndon Johnson 52 years ago. So we're out there in our communities making sure that there are supports, services, and programs to keep the aging and the disabled populations active and engaged in their community and able to live and reside in their home so they can be surrounded by their cherished possessions and loved ones. It ultimately boils down to empowerment philosophy. It makes a lot more sense to empower people to be able to remain active members of their community than it does to pull them out of community and, ha and force them to be in institutional care settings where, quite frankly, nine out of 10 aging or disabled individuals don't wanna be. No, they want to be at home, yes. and, and they, they want to still have that independence. And it's, it's heartbreaking when you start to see that independence going away. Um, I know my, my Nono, um, he's, he turns 90 this year and, in July, and I want to go to his birthday party so bad, but I'm also due in July, <laughs> so I can't go. But um, he had a pretty bad fall about two months ago, and he doesn't remember it at all. Sure. And um, it was the first time he has canceled going to a casino ever. Wow. He had a trip and everything, and my pa grandparents don't cancel going to casinos, and, and it was just heartbreaking because you could see he's becoming more limited in his abilities to do things, even though my grandmother's there and my aunt's there, and she's able to help him. Um, but it, it, you can see in their face, they're just like... And you touch on a, a bunch of very important issues for our aging population, and oftentimes that is uh, issues related to falls and balance or instability will create fear uh, in the home environment and oftentimes it'll cause people to almost self-isolate. They'll stop doing as many activities and hobbies as they once used to do and, and we'll see their world start to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And what a lot of research is showing us is as you pull out of the community and you begin to self-isolate and you stop doing those activities and hobbies and you no longer interact with the same social network that you once had, we see that mental acuity begins to drop. We see that uh, emotional well-being begins to decrease. Uh, issues of depression go up in the aging and disabled when their world begins to get smaller. And then oftentimes that will lead right into increased uh, physical ailments. They'll have higher number of illnesses. When they get injured, it'll take longer for them to heal and recover. So what we're very um, big on at the Area Agency on Aging is getting people the tools and the supports that they need to remain fully active and engaged in the community. And if we're having issues related to fall, well that may be a referral to our health and wellness programs to where we have the evidence-based matter of balance workshops where you can go in and for a period of time, I believe it's eight weeks, you can gain this once a week training to learn how to become more mobile, increase your balance, decrease falls, and these are all evidence-based programs that have sh been shown to produce incredible results. So then you eliminate that fear of falling. You increase that aging or disabled loved one's self-confidence in their ability to get into the bathtub. Oftentimes we'll find that the reason why people will begin to uh, put off their own personal hygiene is because of fears and concerns of falling, getting in and out of the tub. So if you notice that an individual in your family maybe hasn't been bathing as much as they used to, watch. Are they furniture walking, holding on to furniture when they walk around? Are they really timid about stepping down off a step or a curb? This may be a great time to make a referral to a matter of balance workshop to where we can give them that confidence and 
increase their ability to go out and remain active in their hobbies and stay with their friends and really help live a full high quality of life. Because if you're self-isolating yourself for the last 10, 15 years of your life, the quality of that life is not going to be nearly as high as if you're still out there doing the things you love and enjoy. Oh, absolutely. And if you don't have that support structure of family, it's very, if it's very more, it's more difficult for those people, like you had talked about earlier um, in another show, families move away and that loved ones left by themselves. Yeah, or by themselves or just with that spouse who becomes the family caregiver. And now all of those additional care burdens become placed on that other uh, well family member. And I, and I do the air quotes for well family member because we found that oftentimes the spouses who uh, find themselves in this caregiver role many times are dealing with chronic health conditions themselves. No. So we have the more healthy of the two individuals caring for the less healthy of the two individuals. When in all reality, both individuals may benefit from some of the supports and services that the Area Agency on Aging has to offer. And what are some of those services? Well, thank you. Um, a lot of the services that people are very uh, familiar with are going to be like Meals on Wheels. And that's home delivered meals into the home for a loved one who, who has issues getting out of the home and going out and maybe eating at the local senior center where they may have the congregate meal programs, which the Area Agency on Aging also helps fund the congregate meal programs in the communities as well. We help fund the transportation uh, from the senior centers to the other activities that are taking place, as well as the transportation that will go to some of the care centers around Northern Arizona. We do uh, have a large number of care coordinators that are case managers for supports and services to where they'll go out into the home and meet with the individuals and help talk through what are some of the unmet needs you have and what are some of the supports and services that we can bring to bear that will actually improve your overall quality of life. And if we don't have a support or service that would help improve your quality of life, maybe we have a referral to you to another agency or program that can come in and meet that care need that you currently have. It's pretty funny because oftentimes we'll get people who will call our toll-free number, the 877-521-3500 number, with one specific question and come to find out when we get into the home, there's actually a whole slew of issues that were completely unidentified that they didn't even realize there were supports and services for. Well, I didn't even know that service existed. And it's a wonderful feeling then to be able to come into a home and bring these services to bear to really help improve the care recipient, the loved one who's the family caregiver, and it really just changes the dynamic of the entire family because now it takes a lot of that anxiety and responsibility away. And it, and it is, to care for an elderly one is, is a lot of responsibility. I mean, getting them to their, their doctor's appointments, taking them in and making sure that they're going to physical therapy, making sure they're taking the right pills and it's every day and their, their pills aren't, you know, getting confused and, and um, that they are uh, coherent, you know, with ta taking medication. And, and these are all things that I've seen my aunt go through and call my dad because my aunt lives by them but my dad lives, you know, 10 hours away. Sure. So it breaks his heart and he tries to get back as soon as he, every time he can. But again, not a lot of people have that family that can do that. I mean, I know that um, I'm missing his 90th birthday, but I told my husband, I said, we're going out there for Thanksgiving and we're staying with my grandma and my nono and we're gonna stay at the house and he'll get to see his great grandson and, and, and it's gonna be awesome. And, and that's keeping him from, one, I love him and I miss him and I wanna see him and my, and my grandmother, but two, it, it, having that involvement, when you talk about them regressing and, and becoming depressed, I mean, that shortens their lifespan is some of the stuff that I, I've Absolutely. seen. And, and, and what kind of life is that to be alone? Absolutely. You know? So, and we want to really take advantage of this wealth of knowledge and wisdom that our aging population has. These are people that can go out into the community and volunteer for so many of these programs and nonprofit agencies and share this life experience, this wealth of wisdom that they have gained over this entire incredible seven, eight, nine, ten decade life that they've had. Yeah. And so, all of that can be given to the younger generations to come. So it's not just lost and forgotten. We have a, a good program, um, uh, uh, personally, the White Mountain Community Garden. Those people are 65 and above, and we have an 83-year-old woman in there, Blanche, and man, she kicks butt. She's in there getting things done, and she works harder than any of the guys there I see. And um, it's, 
it's sometimes it's sad to see these these elderly people not be able to get on the ladder and change you know fix the shingles or, or the roofing or or um, dig trenches or anything like that but then we have this other group of guys that come in with blue vase and they're the younger generation that can use that guidance from the older generation and we're finding that that it's a very good relationship and it's a very positive impact on both generations when they work together and that's what's important is not pu pu pushing these people aside or those people aside coming in b making them part of the community keeping them involved and I think that is a, an awesome thing that uh, that NACOG can facilitate through making them more ambulatory you Absolutely. know the giving them the transportation now transportation would that be transportation to the balance classes or is that just transportation to doctor's appointment or how's transportation well, a lot work? of that is uh, is area specific and okay. it depends on where the supports and services and programs are being operated so I would say first thing first is is if you have a question about aging or disability related services call us at that toll-free number the 877-521-3500 and just begin the conversation I think it's just a a great starting point. Now if there's one specific thing you want to do, say some of our health and wellness classes, we have a, a plethora of health and wellness classes that you can take advantage of, such as the matter of balance that we talked about, chronic disease self-management classes, diabetes self-management classes, chronic pain self-management classes. If any of these sound like things you'd like to take advantage of, maybe start with one of those things and begin to learn about some of the other supports and services that exist in our community. You may not need to use those supports and services, but one of your family members may, or your neighbor down the street might need it, or your friend at church, or the lady you run into at the grocery store. Your community at large may have needs for these supports and services, and now you can be an advocate on behalf of the aging and the disability uh, population in your community. You can say, well, I know about NACOG and the Area Agency on Aging. And when I took one of these classes, I learned about this program or this service. And here's the phone number. They might really be able to help you because knowledge is power. And nothing breaks my heart more in this field than running into a family that really desperately needed our supports and services but didn't know we existed because we'll hear day in and day out, and I really wish I knew about you guys a couple of years ago when we were taking care of mom. Or if only you were here six months ago after dad had his stroke. And it's heartbreaking because the supports and services are there for family members. We've been here for 52 years. Uh, however, we, we jokingly say we're the best kept secret in our communities, <laughs> which is, uh, which is sad. sad but true. Mm -hmm. uh, we're there. The Area Agency on Aging is here to help you with all of the supports and services that we have available. It just takes one phone call for you to say, what do you have? We need help. Now, specific to Area Agency um, on Aging, what age group it does that service? So it's great. We, we service uh, 18 all the way up. And when I say 18 all the way up, it's because we service family caregivers as well, uh, family caregivers who are caring for loved ones. We have programs to support them oh, because awesome. they are the ones who are making sure in, in many cases that these loved ones can remain in community. Uh, 64 million people in our country last year self-identified as family caregivers and provided $385 billion worth of unpaid care to their loved ones last year alone. In the state of Arizona, family caregivers last year provided $9 billion worth worth of unpaid care to their loved ones. So they need supports and services too. Now we also have supports and services for uh, people who are 55 plus that have been out of the workforce for a while and maybe need some retraining, employment training on how to re-enter the workforce. We call that program CSEP. And that's for people who are 55 plus and are looking to re-enter the workforce. And we can give them on the job training train them with the skills that they need to be able to go out into the community, get a job and support themselves, which sometimes when you're a trailing spouse, you may have lost your spouse who was the primary breadwinner. Uh, you may not have been in the workforce for a long time, and now you need some training to be able to go back into the workforce and work in the field that you desire. We have that available. We have kinship care for grandparents raising grandchildren or non-parents raising children who are 55 plus that need help learning how to be parents again or maybe parents at all for the first time and what that looks like and what can we bring to bear to help you in this new process. We have 60 plus programs that are available for uh, people that are looking to access aging services and overall all of our educational and support group services have no age limits at all. Anybody who wants to come out and learn at a workshop, join one of our support groups and talk about some of the things that they've seen or they're going through in our lives, there are no qualifications. Come on out, learn, talk, 
share. We'd love to hear from you. Where are you guys located in the different places? I mean, do you guys have a, a building or? So we do. We have offices in uh, Lakeside in Wagon Wheel Plaza. Uh, we have an office in Flagstaff. We have an office in Cottonwood. We have an office in Prescott Valley. So we are located in all four northern Arizona counties of Yavapai, Coconino, Navajo, and Apache counties. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you're spread out very, very far. We are larger than the state of Pennsylvania, just our four northern counties. Oh, wow. And then the, and, and that's the services that you guys provide, I mean, it's like the never-ending list. Well, <laughs> and it is, and the education never stops. Annually, we host a conference, an aging conference, for the entire state of Arizona, but it's specifically for northern Arizona, but we bring in people from all over our great nation to learn about our supports and services. October 5th and 6th of this year, we're hosting our Building Strong Communities Conference in Flagstaff, Arizona at the High Country Conference Center. And we're having four educational tracks on leadership, on trends, on healthy aging, and on building strong communities. So if we have social service workers, if we have healthcare workers, if we have uh, first responders, we have members of our community that want to learn about what's going on at a national level and what's going on locally as well and how we can increase our community's ability to support our aging population. This would be a great time and a great place to come and learn more about it. You can learn about our conference by calling that 877-521-3500 number. And that's, like I said, October 5th and 6th coming up this And anybody year. can go? Anybody can go. Yeah. It is $169 to attend the conference, but like we said, it's a two-day conference, and I think you'll find for professionals who are looking to gain continuing education units, it's a great way to keep that continuing education going. And for members of our community, you want to learn how to advocate on behalf of your community, the Building Strong Communities Conference is definitely someplace you should be. Oh, yeah, that didn't, sounds good. I mean, especially, like you said, advocate on behalf of your community. And you have a lot of seniors that have the time to advocate on behalf of their community yes. and get involved. And, and that's how your community flourishes is by those people who are advocating and involved in that community. We say the silver tsunami is here. 10,000 <laughs> plus people a day are turning 60 in our country right now. Wow. So we're currently looking at the largest demographic this world has ever seen in the aging population. And that size wow. of a demographic has a voice and they have power. So yes. we want to get them out there and help let them know how they can support their communities and how we can all move together in positive ways. Well, and it's always important as a, like a child, my, I want my kids to be a part of my grandparents' life because their life was so much, it's more different now. It's just internet and iPhone and you don't have face-to-face -face conversations anymore. It's all in a text real quick. I mean, my girlfriend was visiting and her kid was out on the trampoline and I guess he sprained his finger, but not bad enough to text his mom or who FaceTimed her. She called and she's like, what are you doing? I can see you out the window. And he's like, he sprained my finger. She's like, get in here and talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, and, it, and I sit there going, oh my gosh, my, my kids don't have phones yet, but I'm like, I can't get, have my kids do that. You know, I want them to be able to have a conversation and to be able to communicate um, face to face, yes. which which goes away. But you have your elderly population, and that's that's what they know, mm -hmm. and and that's why I call my grandparents all the time and talk to them on the phone. I don't send them the text. They do have a phone. They text. I get a lot of balloon things from my grandmother. <laughs> I don't think she knows what she's doing, which is sweet. Um, but but yeah, that's that's important. Now um, I know that you're over um, the area of agents, uh, aging, but what other programs does NACOG that you can touch on that you're familiar with? Sure. So NACOG is a is a huge organization representing the four northern counties that we talked about and some of the other programs that exist underneath NACOG besides the Area Agency on Aging that people may be familiar with are such as Head Start uh, for early childhood education. We have uh, Community Services Administration that can help uh, with a lot of needs uh, such as a utility and energy assistance. Maybe you need propane or you need firewood in the winter. Uh, we can help with those things. Maybe appliance repair replacement. We also have weatherization which is um, our ability to get into the home and maybe rehabilitate some of the older homes. Do an energy test. Uh, how inefficient is this home? Can we put in some new insulation or maybe some uh, new windows, new doors, some 
weather stripping around the windows that will dramatically lower your cost to heat and cool your house. We have those programs available as well. Employee workforce development for people who are looking for training on getting into the workforce and, and maybe developing a new skill. So there are a huge number of supports and services that exist under the umbrella of NACOG and uh, we're, we're just really excited to be out there helping our community. So if somebody calls the number and they, they, they call the number to find information um, and and at once do you automatically send them uh, assign them a case manager or um, I mean if they don't know what they need but they know they need something I mean <laughs> so it's a good place to start if I don't know what I need but I need something that's a great place to start uh, start by calling that toll free number eight seven seven five two one thirty five hundred talk to our central intake specialists who will gather the information and try to work through what your needs are. And if it sounds like you need an intake with a case manager to see if you qualify for the supports and services that are identified in that conversation, they'll go ahead and schedule a case manager or care coordinator to touch base with you find a good time to come out and meet with you and really go through a full holistic assessment to see what are the supports and services that we can bring to bear to help you stay active and engaged in the home longer. It's, it's a really nice, quick, simple 17-page assessment uh, <laughs> that the state of Arizona gave us. But the nice part about it being so expansive is it really does cover all of the identified unmet needs in the home. And we can then see what can we meet and maybe we can give a referral to other programs and organizations that can meet some of the services uh, and needs that we don't have. Oh, that's good. So, so it would be done at their home so you guys can assess the home and assess the person and how, how they live. Absolutely. Basically, and, and then from there, they have this case manager that they can use any time. And something that we had touched on off camera was how people usually get your services when they need them now. Oh, sure. So oftentimes we meet people when they're in crisis. I need help now, quick, help me. And we always try to say, do your homework before you're in a crisis. Find out about what supports and services are in your community before you actively need them. And it will bring down a lot of the anxiety that you tend to feel when you find yourself in crisis. Because you're so focused on the acute issue, whether it be the care of the loved one or the needs of the loved one, that now having to juggle multiple organizations, multiple agencies, set up appointments with care coordinators over here, case managers over here, social workers over here, a hospital specialist over here, it can become so much to throw on a person at once that they can begin to emotionally shut down and stop looking for any supports and services which doesn't help you and it doesn't help your loved one that needs the supports and services. So what we try to encourage people to do is learn about the supports and programs and services that exist in your community before you need them. And then you can begin conversations with your loved one. Now, mom, dad, I know you're in a great place right now. You're completely active, you're mobile, you're in your home, you're healthy, but what are we going to do if and when we find ourselves at a period of time to where you're no longer able to do the things that you used to like to do? What would you like your future care to look like? Start that process. Help them build that plan for future care now, and then you have that buy-in. You don't have the pushback. Because mm -hmm. you're building it together and, and moving forward. Yes. Yeah. So is there a website that people can go to to find more information or anything? There is a website. You can go to www.nacog.org and you can learn a lot more about us. Um, you can call us at 877-521-3500 to learn more about us. Uh, you can go on to the, the website, find specific programs, learn more about specific supports and services. And if you have information you want to become say a sponsor for our upcoming conference, you can call us and find out. If you want to volunteer your expertise to help run one of the health and wellness classes, give us a call. You want to volunteer your skills and expertise to give back into the community some other way, or you just want to learn more about what the programs are, you can reach out to us and we're happy to come out and speak to community organizations, talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, or, or talk to your family about what their unique needs are. Now you had talked about some of your classes like the matter of balance, the chronic disease classes and stuff like that. Is that something you constantly have or is that something, okay, so do those go yes. on? How do they find out about those classes? Great way to find out about those classes is either the website or okay. by calling the toll-free number. Okay, 
All right, good, good. Do you have anything else that you want to uh, say about NACOG? I mean, that was, it's a lot of information. I mean, we can go on for a while. We could, we really do. It's, it's such an expansive organization. I'm really proud to be a part of it because we really do focus on identifying what the unmet needs in the community are and how can we bring these supports and services to bear to meet those needs within our community. If we can keep people active, engaged in the community longer, we know overall we're all going to remain healthier and happier in the long run. Because we have a phrase, aging, if it isn't your issue, it will be. Because we're all going to be there. Yeah, and you're so right. the groundwork we're doing now, we all will get to take advantage of the infrastructure and the supports and services we build now in the future. So it's kind of, it's kind of great to, to help our loved ones now that are aging, but also set the foundation for a, a firm supports and services network for when we age. Because ultimately, we're all going to find ourselves in a situation where we need a little bit more help. Absolutely. And you want to get that help while you're able to do it instead of when you're not, yes. which is the hard thing to do. And how long have you been with um, NACOG? I've been with the agency four years now. Before that, I was in the private side of home health. Okay, yeah, because you're, you're extremely knowledgeable about all the programs. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of stuff to know. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Well, um, and you also work with some agencies. Uh, you, you partner with some agencies. I know that you're partnering with Timber Mesa on the... Um, was it the, is it called an angel? Angel, test? angel care. Yeah. So there, there are programs out there that we partner with multiple agencies, like you said, because no one agency anymore has the funding to be able to take care of it all. You're so right. we learn how to network and partner with org organizations to get help out there. And, and the one you are referring to is, uh, where we have medical alarms that are able to go out into the homes of members of our community. Uh, maybe say they are a fall risk or they live alone and they're socially isolated and they might need help help, one of those I've fallen and I can't get up type of pendants. We have those systems available that we can get into the home to really help keep people engaged in their community and safe because like we said, it, if you're a family caregiver but you've got to go to work and your loved one's home alone all day long, there's a lot of stress and anxiety that's associated with that. Are they okay? What's going to happen if they get hurt and I'm not there? Well, maybe this device can give you that peace of mind to be able to go out, go and do your job, and know that your loved one's still safe. Yeah, that, and that's uh, all the stuff that you guys are doing is amazing. Um, so one more time, the phone number and the website? Phone number is 877-521-3500, and the website is www.nacog.org. All right, and give them a call and ask your questions. They are happy to help. So thank you for watching Safe and Sound, and we'll see you next month.